And right now I'm standing at the bridge on Main Street in Belleville, which always seems to be hit the worst. This is an event to kick off the entire season for Ohio State. And I think we have some uh, avid Ohio State fans right here. I don't know if you can get a shot of these shores. And witnesses were standing approximately right here during the incident, and they say they saw things much differently than reported by police. Dispatch received a call at approximately 8.30 a.m. Tuesday from a resident who was walking down County Road 23. These are some unique kind of drums. Can you kind of explain maybe the origin of them and exactly how do you play something like this? Despite the freezing weather, surrounding street corners were filled with candidate supporters. I also had the opportunity to participate in the Awareness Day, and I was able to experience what it's like for someone with cerebral palsy and be in a wheelchair. Leona had to keep this door open down here, so the water line from the cistern, which has been filled in, could enter the home and hook up with the plumbing to give them water. Hello? Hey, you got an MVA in front of Circle K on Lexington Avenue, car versus pedestrian. An MVA? Yep, you know what I'm advising to step it up. Okay. Car versus pedestrian. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. This was the call made only minutes after 30-year-old Adam Marchant of Mansfield was struck by a Richland County Sheriff Deputy's cruiser. Deputy Michael Googe was driving south on Lexington Avenue when he hit Marchant while he was walking across the streets. From what the witnesses have told us and advised us, the individual had tried to cross the street and then for whatever reason decided to turn back and go back to the curb that he came from just as the deputy was approaching. Uh, the deputy tried to take evasive action to avoid this individual but could not. Um, after striking the individual, the deputy stopped position his car as best as he could to, to protect the individual from other traffic, uh, rendered whatever first aid he could and called for an ambulance. And right outside the Circle K on Lexington Avenue, friends and family of the victim have set up a memorial adorned with teddy bears, flowers, and signs. And witnesses were standing approximately right here during the incident, and they say they saw things much differently than reported by police. When I got up here, he was coming off of Blanche Street and turned left. And there was two other girls down here, and we started towards Adam Lane in the middle of the road, and he told us to get back. And he pulled right in front of him, and he walked over, and he felt his pulse, and then he, that's all he did. He stood there with a flashlight, and we kept asking him if he was dead, and he kept saying no. But you could tell, I mean, there was no point. I mean, you could tell. Adam hit the hood of the car. He hit the windshield. He hit the roof of the car and flew up in the air and landed right there by running Keen in the gas station. The sheriff was all the way up there before they stopped. He stopped and he was on the side of the road. He just stood there for a minute. We looking at him laying there. He wasn't breathing. The Mansfield Police Department says they are continuing their investigation and will submit their findings to the Richland County Prosecutor's Office. Well, certainly uh, our condolences go out to the family. Um, it's not an easy thing to go through. For WMFD Newswatch, I'm Megan Mo Jason Swords is a New Hope client, and today he was working on packaging lawnmower starter ropes. I'm putting them together like this, end by end, and um, these are for um, lawnmowers to start the lawnmower with, so that's what I'm doing with them. Lindsay Early from the 179th Airlift Wing in Mansfield helped out, but had a simulated disability where she was blind in her left eye and could barely see out of her right. I rely, everyone normally if you can see well you rely on your vision, you rely and to have that taken away it's you realize how much you need other senses and how how hard and difficult it is to do day to day things and I mean he literally makes it look so easy so when I put these on I was like oh <laughs> this is harder than I thought. There's a committee of, of uh, agency employees that come up with uh, disabilities that they think we can simulate for individuals that come in, community members that come into our facilities, and they identify um, maybe some individuals that you can work with that uh, have similar disabilities uh, as far as being in a wheelchair or not having use of their arm. I also had the opportunity to participate in the Awareness Day and I was able to experience what it's like for someone with cerebral palsy and be in a wheelchair and also use an arm splint. And even though I am right-handed, I didn't realize how much my left hand helps me out and I was able to use my feet to maneuver the wheelchair but still going up those ramps was incredibly difficult. New Hope client David Burris showed me how to put together windshield wiper fluid brackets. A simple job became much harder with the use of only one hand. Put this little black clip um, like this, then like this. Make sure it's clicked good, and all you have to do is do it this way and put 
Put it in the box. Oh. Like that. Okay. And I also learned that David and all the workers are paid for each piece they complete. The individuals are paid per piece they do. Every piece they touch and do, they get paid for. If it's getting it out of the bin, bringing it to the table, they get paid for every piece they bring over. They get paid for every piece they put the nut in. Um, once it's in the box and done, then it's checked by staff, and then it's, another individual is paid to box it into the finished box that it's sent out in. <laughs> for WMFD Newswatch, I'm Megan Mahoney. Many of us take for granted clean tap water. But for Northern Ashen County resident Leona Gott, clean running water was something she had not experienced for decades, until recently. I was buying water out of the bottle to cook and to drink, and it was costing me about $25 a, a month. So what I'm paying now, and the water is much better, is a, a great, Asset to me. Leona used a cistern for many years, but in 1973, it obtained a leak. It did well for 40 some years, but uh, got a, a leak in the pipe that comes from the cistern into the house. Leona had to keep this door open down here so the water line from the cistern, which has been filled in, could enter the home and hook up with the plumbing to give them water. But as the winter months grew closer, not only was cold air drafting into their home, but they were afraid the water line might freeze and then she'd be left without water. The Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement between the U.S. and Canada was preventing local residents, like Leona, to receive clean drinking water from the tap. Right along this ridge here is a line that differentiates between the Great Lakes Basin and the Ohio River Basin. So if we were to take a cup of water and we'd come over here and dump part of it out and then we come just a couple of feet over and dump the rest of it, what went on this side will theoretically run into the Ohio River. What went on that side will theoretically run into Lake Erie. And by a treaty with Canada, we're not allowed to take water from Lake Erie or any of the Great Lakes and take it to the Ohio River Basin. Water from the Great Lakes was banned from being diverted to areas out of the Great Lakes Basin and fear the resource would be depleted. So we went to the city of Ashland, who was already in the Ohio River Drainage Basin. And we said, would you guys sell us some water that we can distribute in the Ohio River Drainage Basin? And then we don't have to cross that magic line. And they said, yes, we will do that. After the agreement was made, a water line and pump station were placed in northern Ashland County. This is, this is joy when I want to drink a water, go to the tap and just turn the water on and get it. For WMFD News Watch, I'm Megan Mahoney. And it was a frightening sight, and it could happen along any highway or railroad track in north central Ohio. That's what prompted the local emergency planning committee to stage a mock drill today. And history was also made on Saturday, but it's the kind Irish fans hoped would never happen. Notre Dame has been playing football since 1887, and after a 31-14 loss to Michigan State, the Irish have started the season at 0-4 for the first time in school history. The purpose of the show is to address relevant issues regarding the state of the school district how these issues impact our community, and to inform you on the challenges and opportunities. Today, Dr. Lloyd Martin, the superintendent of the Mansfield City Schools, is with us to review the most frequent asked questions during his regular neighborhood forums.